Today on The Breakfast, with few hours to the most anticipated elections in the history of Nigeria, stakeholders say youth could play a significant role in deciding the direction of the 2023 elections, given their level of participation in a voters' registration exercise. We'll look at this in the first conversation on The Breakfast. Also on The Breakfast, the Nigerian Basketball Federation has released a 12-man lease for the final window of the qualifiers for the 2023 FIBA World Cup. Monday Thomas will join the conversation as we proceed. And as usual, uh, today's dailies have some interesting headlines. So we'll uh, analyze some of the top stories on the front page pages of the national newspapers in Off the Press. Nigerians troop out to cast their votes in less than 24 hours, like we said, in what has uh, become uh, one of the most anticipated elections in the history of Nigeria. Um, and of course, Plus TV Africa here to give you um, blow by blow, minute by minute um, reports and analysis as the voting continues uh, throughout tomorrow. Of course, election studio will be open right from the morning. And uh, you implore to stay with us. My name is Kofi Bartel. So welcome, Messi. As the 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 atmosphere is so so palpable, but let me allow you. First of all, I must say it's good to have you here. Really. Yeah, so yeah. I would probably say it's, it's good like, to have you here too. Yeah, it's good to have you. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Messi Ebopo. Okay. Well, you don't have to say my name for me, but of course he said that already. Yeah, my yeah. name is Messi Ebopo. There's so much tension. Uh, I feel like anxiety people like there's, there's a lot and another thing again is if, if you move around the streets of lagos everywhere's quiet coffee everywhere has been quiet since yesterday i need to tell you so i'm, I'm wondering are we in december are people traveled what's going on the roads are quite you know very quiet mm -hmm. the streets are quiet everywhere seems to be very quiet but of course we understand that we're going to be heading to the polls you know tomorrow a few hours to that I am, you know, glad to be part of history. You know, uh, it's really exciting, democracy. Yes, and I, I yes, think that absolutely. this election is one that the world is looking at. Mm, Everyone mm. is watching from Africa, outside Africa, yes. what have you. You know, you know, Mercy, when, when we read that, I read that intro, of course, we <laughs> call it the most anticipated election in Nigeria history. But, you know, from, from as we're journalists, so we can remember what happened last election. You know, every election has been it's the like most, most anticipated. No, Kofi, you know. but this is actually the, 2019, it was so, it said, ah, oh, this is the most anticipated. <laughs> you know, 2015, it was, ah, oh, it said, oh, this is most 2011, it was really, it said, ah, oh, this is the, you know, so I don't know. Maybe the next one will be more anticipated than this. But yeah. I think it shows uh, that we are making progress democratically. You know, years ago, we used to hear them say, Nigeria's democratic experiment. <laughs> and so I said, ah, this experiment, won't it finish? But I think we're making progress. We're making progress. We, so we're really making progress. We moved from being, uh, seeing Nigeria has moved from being, uh, uh, you know, basically two-party state now to having a viable, formidable third party. Uh, we used to hear that the third, third alternative, force. third force and all that, it seemed like a pipe dream. Uh, now it's a reality and the third party really has a chance of breaking the monopoly of the leading two, the big two parties, you know, so... Well, the PDP said they'll be in power for 60 years. Um, I don't know. They want to go and complete those 60 years. And then the APC, of course, came in with a lot of uh, promise, but delivered so um, uh, little. If you look at the, the, um, the results based on promise, you know, we're not talking politics here. We just said the facts that they haven't been able to live up to expectations. Of course, they can say COVID-19, um, the war in Ukraine and all that. You know, but the fact is that, yes, the reasons you, you have to listen to the reasons, reasons, but what cannot be argued will be that uh, things haven't really been as as they hoped. And the candidate um, of the party has, has said that, you know, has said that, um, you know, the other the other guys are trying to offer something, you know, they want to offer a new thing, but it's easier said than done. So let's see. Let's see what happens at the end of the day. It's what happens well, we start, we start things at the top training segment. Uh, we'll look at the um, uh, this is uh, the preparation of some of the agencies of the federal government towards the uh, general elections. Um, 
we're going to look at that. Of course, we have the uh, Federal Safety Corps being one of the government agencies doing their best to uh, get ready. I mean, I, I was in Abuja yesterday, and uh, at strategic points, you would see, um, you know, each each agency coming out on the road. I think what has happened is that the um, the what has happened is that the all the security agencies or you know paramilitary agencies are are out you know so when i got back to lagos yesterday i, I drove from the airport through ikeja even around ikeja you see the customs officers well on patrol you had they had their vehicles outside you know on, on that ikeja road where you have the offices and you know you're seeing them they even had their own armored personnel carrier you know in abuja you could see the uh the guards of brigade around you know the guards of brigade around different places uh, in in the fct and of course in lagos yesterday we saw the the army um going doing a show of force around uh, some parts of lagos in port harcourt the the navy um also did a show of force their men patrolled the streets of port harcourt you know it's a, a unique one because you don't normally hear of the navy you know, doing a show of force during elections. But the Federal Safety Corps is one of those agencies. You're looking at them on the screen now. This is a Federal Safety Corps in Anambra State, um, deploying about 1,060 personnel for uh, election duties. Um, that's what we see okay, as we get ready for the polls tomorrow. This is Anambra State. The sector commander uh, of the F uh, FRC explained that although the Independent National Electoral Commission dictated uh, the pace of the election. Um, the FRSC would only play a supportive role in conjunction with other security agencies to ensure a successful polls. So, Messi, this is trending. A lot of people are talking about it. You know, FRSC, FRSC, you people are out on the road. You know, it's, there is a lot of conversation. Well, the FRSC is participating in vehicle certification for the election. Okay, they know what to look for. You can't just get into your car and drive. They also say that it is the duty uh, and responsibility of the Corps uh, to ensure that vehicles conveying election materials to, you know, local government areas and other places across the state are uh, in good working condition. Okay, that's interesting. Um, uh, they expect to enforce total lockdown on the day of the election against unauthorized movement of vehicles uh, on election duties as the electoral law provides, especially interstate movement, so that the people of Anambra State can cast their vote freely and fairly. Um, I mean, that, that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, well, very interesting. But uh, just as we say that this is what Nigerians are talking about, it's also important to note that people are saying, oh, it, it can't be, you know, at this moment that we're saying the FRC should be out and up and out. Hmm. Now, the FRC has a commitment. There's a reason why they were established. So. Uh, it's, also, it's okay that you're saying what we have to be supportive of the uh, electoral umpire, that's INEC. But after now, Nigerians are saying, so what happens before now? Because every other time, yesterday I was driving back home, not necessarily me on the steering, but getting back home. And then I was in front of the vehicle and we had to take a lot of time because we're just being careful that we can't overtake. We can't just be anywhere. We just have to be careful. Oh, and because I wasn't so on the much steering, fear. yeah, so much fear. Now because I wasn't on the steering, for me, the vehicle looks very medieval. The, the vehicle looks old, like the truck. It's not even a vehicle; it's a truck. So for me, I, I just wish I could just you know sway my way. I had already thought out how I was going to navigate and just get out of it because they were just in front, slow and steady. There was no way to overtake. My point is, I think without even having the knowledge of certification and what have you, that vehicle is not supposed, that truck is not supposed to be on the road. So yes, we applaud the FRSC for being very proactive and acting in a, you know, uh, in a supportive way to the umpire. Whether it is it's their uh, duty or not, but we appreciate the fact that uh, this support system to it. But we're saying beyond the elections, what happens? Right, because every other time, especially if you live in Lagos, you will know that the too many vehicles are on the road or trucks. They're not supposed to be on the road. They have no business Kofi being on the road. It's a disaster. In Lagos, yes. Yeah, I in, don't Lagos know how you guys in Lagos, no. I mean, I've been in Port Harcourt and I, I, I'm saying, Kofi, yeah. you need to see this vehicle. If you were driving behind this truck, no, you will be on, scared for on, yourself on, on election day. Whether no, so so oh, Nigerians are saying that it, it's okay that this should yeah. happen on election day. 
Now, yeah. yesterday, if we were talking about election day, there was also another video that emanated. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not sure we can put out that video here. So these, these are the are irregular to, things that we see on our roads every day. Yes. Okay. So we're saying okay. that we, we shouldn't streamline it to the election day. Mm. And if we're saying we need to pay attention to the vehicles that will be conveying election materials, you know, to where elections will be happening in different locations, polling units, we're saying that let's not just limit it. The FRSC is not just committed to election day activity. They have a duty to perform, ensure that safety of the road is paramount. I mean, you look at the nomenclature, road safety, that's what it is. But as of yesterday or so, there's also a video, I don't know if you've seen that video, of a vehicle that broke down. I mean, if you see the vehicle, it's just, you know, what is that? Someone made a video. It's a user-generated video that was put out yesterday of a vehicle that was conveying materials to Cross River State. And it was looking very, 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 very coffee. No, so no. These are, these are if the you're going to be taking that, the, that yes. the, um, the NURTW uh, members would have, um, uh, you know, who were contracted, who have been contracted by. Uh, I like, yeah, so these are the everyday buses that Nigerians use. You go to the bus parks, these are what they use, you know, and um, it is, it is uh, indicative of the, 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 the poor state of public transportation, you know, uh, in the country. I mean, in different cities, the standards of um, the vehicles and the taxis, whether bus, keke, whatever, or um, a sedan, the taxis that convey, you know, Nigerians around, they, the standards are really poor. You know, um, I may remember, I mean, in Port Harcourt, you know, residents have complained severally. You look at the taxes in Port Harcourt, for instance, uh, terrible. I mean, Lagos right now, you have mostly uh, down for the buses. Not yeah. necessarily. There's also Korokwe. Korokwe, no, no. But I'm talking about sedan, regular car, taxi. You don't have that in Lagos as it used to be then. The yellow cabs are no longer there. So mostly uh, you have the mass, you know, transit taxis like those buses go away like you call them or downfall uh -huh. but in cities in the, in the country where you have no more car you know it's just a sedan some of these cars are so bad you know so bad abuja is where you have maybe uh, green taxis a bit okay but you go to other cities around the country messi it's, it's terrible what you see you know there's one day in portugal i saw a, 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 a taxi a cab it was using a shower cap as his <laughs> gear because the gear had come out, so you use the shower. Some don't have lights. Some don't have, don't have side mirror. Some don't have brake light. Some don't even have door. Some taxi, you have to use something to tie the door when you sit down. You know, so I, I, you've made raised the point. Um, this is not to say the FRC isn't doing well uh, as far as uh, tomorrow's election is concerned. They are. We want to kind of commend them for really stepping up to come out. I think they need a lot of commendation. You know, for, for they're doing their job, but they're doing the right thing. Okay. So, um, but what you're saying is very important that beyond the elections, they need to wake up and um, they need to do more because you have a lot of infractions, a lot of unworthy cars on the roads. Sure. Um, and, but ab ab about movement on election day, um, where will people be who have no business, no accreditation, be moving on election day? What exactly are you going to do? Now, of course, we need to make exceptions for people who have emergencies. You know what I mean? You're not, election is meant for, to enhance the life of people, right? It's not meant to, to make their lives worse. So if, if there's an emergency, somebody has a medical emergency, they're meant to be on the road. They're meant to access a, a medical facility. You know, my HMO um, provider yesterday sent an email telling, you know, us, uh, me, you know, some of the things that would not be available on, on that day. Um, but they said you can access your facilities. You're very so fortunate th yes. that you got yeah. got a mail. Yeah, yeah, this year we got a mail. They said they can, you can access some of their facilities that they have in their own clinics. But the thing is, is um, it means that they so I said okay, it means that they expect people can will be able to get medical attention, and you know medical attention is very, is very essential. So I do hope that as they're doing their work, that they'll also be aware that people may have emergencies and nobody should be harassed, like COVID nineteen. You know, some people who are going for medical emergencies were harassed. There was, there was, um, there was abuse of human rights by, by Nigerian security uh, agencies. But for those who have no business on the road, you know, you just stay at home. All right, go and vote. Now, you know, Mercy, even as a journalist, in 2019, I had my tag. I moved from place to place. But the thing is, there were soldiers on the road. They were stationed at different junctions, Mercy. You know, soldiers. They sat there, they built their tent. 
They eat there, cook there, sat there, did everything there for, uh, for a couple of days. So where you won't go? Uh -huh. You know, so I mean, they don't need to even do too much. Yeah, if I see your job, but they should they push soldiers on the street. If you don't have any business, if like go now, <laughs> those guys, those guys are not how to discuss with you. <laughs> even no, I, 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 I understand. Yeah, I, when I when I saw Kofi, them, twenty nineteen, when I saw them, COVID twenty nineteen. I just knew how to respect uh, myself. Trust me, I'm sure you were in Patakot, right? If I'm not mistaken, I, with my tago, I had to explain guess, myself. Guess where I was? I I was in you know the creeks, Bakasi, you know around Cameroon. Okay. <laughs> you know, doing all of that reports and getting all of the stories out there. Be because these are not very fancy places. Bush. Mm. That would be the word. Like, imagine that you allow me to say it in PG now. Bush. Real bush. Like, you, you know, so at some point I started getting very emotional because I can't be. I started, is this a place? Where are we going to? You know, because it feels like the forest. It's like we're going nowhere. But people live in these places. And then I started seeing that the roads were horrible. Mm -hmm. And then I started seeing that, you know, in local government and words, they had no roads. They had no structure. You know, it was nothing to write home about. Then I understand that there's need for, you know, the presence of the third tier of government. And that's why every other time, I probably would raise the question as to, what exactly are we doing to get, you know, government closer to the people? Because that's what you understand. Now, what we have in the cities, Lagos, you know, the, the, the metropolis is different from what you have in the creeks. People live in these places. You would pass a lot of forests that you see in the movies, whether foreign movies or local movies. I'm telling you about thick forests. But people leave Excuse after me. these places. Mm -hmm. And it's really unfortunate that they don't have access to the basic things of life. And so it just gave me a different perspective entirely that you have to cross from one point to the other. But look, just like we have mentioned, the election is an event. And some people would say that hopefully we're able to just even, I mean, why should we even talk, talk about restricting activities movement? Shouldn't it just be normal? Can we just have normal activities and then still have the election? But I don't think that we as a people are ripe for that kind of conversation. We're still grappling yeah, you know, with you voter know, Messi, party. It, it, is, it is a very, very um, you know, nice idea. A very nice suggestion. You know, let's, 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 like, life doesn't need to end when we have elections. You know, we, we, we can have elections in the country. And still have life. And, and still have life. But the thing is, we haven't proven that we have the capacity, the politicians themselves too, and they are thugs, you know, and they are, they are thugs and supporters haven't proven they have the capacity to, to stay away from trying to, to, to cheat during the elections. Yeah, we haven't shown we have the capacity. So for now, let's, let's, let's go through this one. Definitely. You know, because in the days of ballot box snatching, um, of course, you see that they'll move the ballot paper from one place to point H one B, you know, unauthorized uh, to go and Location. dump, yeah, you know. So, so now we, they want to know who is who. You know, if you're moving, you're not um, authorized, then they, the authorities deal with you. Okay, so it, it's very important. Right. However, Messi, the capacity of the authorities to really spread themselves around everywhere is is being called to question in recent elections. I mean, I think in 2019 it was when a reporter from a radio station I worked with, you know, and several reporters were were picked up by by you want to call it um, heavily armed, you know, cultists or militants in some part of River State who were working for a particular local government chairman. Heavily armed, they, they, their local government was cordoned off, you know, like they, they locked down the entire place. They locked down the entire place. You can't move in River State, okay? Mm. Right. They determine who votes. So at that local government, a guys were prevented from going in till they finished the operation for that election. Then they now release them. <laughs> it wasn't funny. And these guys were armed to the teeth. And there's no police officer a police station that is as armed as the guys that we saw. Uh, sophisticated you, weapons. You know, there's sophisticated. Messi, in elections in some parts of countries, when you see that there's another army, there's another force but, outside but, 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 but Kofi, you sophisticated know, you, Kofi, weapons. Kofi, you know that this hmm. other army, we need, we need to move on now. So, so, uh, so, so, but what, what, what the aim is, is to make sure that people, because now they realize that they can't steal the vote anymore. These guys have realized that they cannot take uh, ballot boxes and, 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 and just, you know, and print and then stuff them and stash them. They realize that now the vote, there's power in the vote. So what they do is they go control who comes out to vote. Okay? And watch out. You're going to see a lot of that on, on Saturday. Wow. They will make sure that they intimidate the people 
Yeah. And these people are working for people in, in government, some of them are not in government. They'll go shoot everywhere, shoot everywhere, shoot no, everywhere. No, no, announce the local I, language. I don't, I don't think that that's... Announce the local language that if you come out, you are, you are dead. Okay? I, I don't think it, that that's me, going me, to be the case. Mercy, because... in, so, in, so, in some local... I'm telling you what we see. In some local government areas, you know, in Rivers, they actually flog you. Those ones don't want to shoot. They have their guns. They don't want to shoot. But they flog. I can give an instance of cricket local government. Area. They were flogging people out of old men. You know, old, uh, So you see, oh, maybe people are protesting. I think it's trying to... So, Soldiers are trying to scuttle elections, but people are not allowed to vote. Well, so so, so, so I think it was it, a conversation. It, it, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a conversation that you know we have had. Uh, the points that you have raised very valid. Voter suppression, and I ask a question. That is a strategy. If we, if we can talk about you know uh, credible elections without making reference to voter mm -hmm. suppression and voter intimidation and also vote buying, because sometimes. Uh, the next top trending we're looking at is the fact that the EFCC has deployed personnel to ensure that there's no vote buying. But you know, vote buying takes place even before the election. So it's not even on the election let's, let's ground. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so, so we talk about that now. Um, there's also a conversation that's making the rounds, which is getting a lot of Nigerians talk, is that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that's the EFCC, has deployed operatives to 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory to combat vote buying ahead of tomorrow's general election. Well, uh, it's part of the uh, team's effort, you know, deployed across the country to ensure that there's also a release of incidents reporting hotline for the 36 states of the Federation and, and the FCT. So when you say 36, you have to say and the FCT. And the move was part of the Air Force to ensure that the integrity of the elections, uh, the 25th uh, Presidential National Assembly election, is upheld to you know the latter. That's exactly why this is happening. EFCC, as it is, has sent out uh, personnel to different parts, states, to ensure that vote buying is nothing to write home about, that vote buying is not an issue. But fingers are crossed. Interesting, interesting. Messi, uh, vote buying is, is a serious, a serious uh, um, uh, issue in the country, you know, um, and this has been a strategy of this, these guys. You know, these politicians are out for war. I, I'm sure you saw the video of one um, uh, House of Reps member in, in River State who was saying that um, they should just crack two or three people. And he was invited and I think arrested, detained by DSS. You know, it just crack, crack. You carry a, a gun and crack two or three people. In other words, just shoot two or three people. Uh, um, so these guys have devised all sorts of, uh, of means. You know, we're going to stop supporters of other, pe other parties from coming to vote. We want only our people to vote so that we can have, you know, the highest votes. So we'll hire thugs, we'll shoot, we'll intimidate. It will beat people, it will fire guns in the end, then make people scared so they don't come out. Well, that's the first one. Second one is if, you know, um, this doesn't work in some places and people come out to vote, then we're going to, to, to pay. We'll tell, take this money, vote for us. And vote buying makes it cannot happen if the electorate do not allow it to happen. So let's say a party comes and its agents go to a particular polling unit. And say we want to start sharing 10, 10,000 naira, 5,000 5, naira. Okay? New naira notes. What will the, the voters there say? Will they allow it to continue? Will they say, hey, yes? Or would someone say, no, you can't do that? Okay? What will the INEC officials there say? Okay? All the agents of the other party say. But you see, they've devised means. In other ways, they don't go to the polling units to share the money anymore. They can say, okay, we'll pass a message across the local language. If you vote, take a picture of your vote, your, your ballot paper. Let's see it when you come out to see somewhere behind and we'll pay you. Or you lift it up so we see that you voted for my party. You know, and then when you come, we'll pay you. So, so I, I said something yesterday at a particular forum. Messi, I said that it takes two to tango. Okay? If somebody is, is buying something, means someone is selling it, right? Messi, this, this hair you're wearing now. Okay? Um, you, know, you know what? Okay, let me let me not go. Let why me not you, go. Why are uh, you talking about I, want, I, I don't know what to use. Well, I okay, don't know. Use you're, something you're else. You're wearing it, you know. But but uh, you, of course, you saw you saw someone was selling, selling beautiful what? Brazilian hair, you know, very expensive, and then 
he said, okay, I want to buy it. Mercy is very rich, by the way. You know? Um, I'm glad. And yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so if there was no one selling it, you would you buy? <laughs> would you buy? Kofi, so I don't know where you're driving out. No, no, story. would you buy? No, see, Kofi, the thing is, uh, I don't know where you're driving out. No, no, no. But uh, okay, what I'm saying I, is that it, it takes two to tango. Tango where? For someone to, for someone to, <laughs> <laughs> for someone to, to buy something of you, I'm happy for the EFCC, but for someone to buy something of you, someone must be selling it. Okay, if, if, if you don't sell, if the person who you bought this hair from said, so, said so, I'm not selling, will you buy? Can I say something now? Yeah, please. So I think that, you know, I know the point that you're trying, you're, yeah. you're about to, yeah. you know, send home, the point you're trying to make. But I think that there's no, I feel that uh, it might not necessarily connect with what we're dealing with. Now, let's look at it. No, no it connects because, because, because we're talking about vote buying. And EFC so if is somebody saying, is not selling, there's no going. To, you don't. You're not going to have a buy. Can you force me to sell? To to to. Can you buy what I refuse to sell? But but why why are you selling? What are you selling? Is also another thing that we're yeah, talking but, about. Yeah, but I'm saying that this, you can't ignore the seller. You understand? So so the seller is selling now. We're looking at what is the seller selling? Your votes. Am I in need of it? Your votes. Let me give you a, a so so you're selling your vote. See, Kofi, this is mm, what I'm trying mm. to get at. So I, I understand your on point. On politicians, oh, politicians are vote buyers. They they. Uh, da, 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 da. Kofi, but I'm saying I'm saying yeah, but but who the people selling? We need to also. So can I talk about in. the people that are selling, yeah. but not to hold brief for the people that are selling? And that's why we say this, and that's why I say this. And you know how the you people would say you you can't say you're not a thief, Kofi. You can't say you're not a thief until you're faced with. A scenario where you should steal mm -hmm. and you come out with your head straight mm -hmm. and you walk out of the scene without taking a penny. That's when we can say you're not a thief. But you stole. You didn't steal. So people say, you know how someone wakes up and say, I can tell you I'm not a thief. I'm not a thief. You can't call me a thief. But what if I've not been presented with a, a situation where I should steal? I have a story for I don't you. Know if you. I don't know if you get where I have a, I have no, a story. Coffee, for I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I have but a story allow for me you. to land. Okay. Now, yeah. what I'm saying. I think that the reason why vote buying is thriving, yesterday I had a conversation mm -hmm. on this platform and one of our guests talked about the issue of um, poverty, how the people have been impoverished by government mm -hmm. or poverty has become a tool. Kofi, there's a lot of poverty. You and I might not be on that table. You and I might be sure that we would have a meal Absolutely. or two every Absolutely. other day. You and I are sure that we can have clothes on us. You Absolutely. and I might not be scrambling we, we know, for the Naira notes. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. So people but are you hungry. have a lot of people, there's a lot of hunger. Now, prior to this time while I was still in the university, I, I came out with this ideology that poverty and corruption are cousins. Went to the same university, by the way. Okay. So, poverty, that's my ideology. And, you know, for the likes of, uh, you know, great philosophers like Aristotle, the likes, hmm. when you want to mention them, hey. uh, these uh, things are uh, not magical. I mean, amazing. I don't have to be there to begin to put yeah. out all of this, but this is what I believe. Okay. I believe that poverty and corruption are related. They are so related. They are, in short, they are blood Can brothers. Can I ask you a, a question? That's, that's, a that's, question. that's what I, I believe. I, I, that's I, a theory. I, 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 but I'm not holding so, so let, let me ask you a question. Go are, ahead. Are poverty and crime related? Poverty, crime, cousins, all, okay. not um, um, almost all of them. You okay, can't say okay. in all so cases. If, 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 but I'm if, telling if, you that if poverty... You meet, if, if you meet, if, uh, maybe say you have a opportunity to speak to somebody who was engaged in kidnapping, all right? They kidnap someone for ransom. I said in not all, all cases. I'm coming for ransom. And they tell you that, oh, I, I went into this because I have no, no work to do. And uh, we're hungry. I don't have food to eat, my family. So I said, let me do this thing so I can find something to eat. All you say to them. Be, I, I would, I, I mean, so to, to, to look at it, no, no, let's be very no, he, honest. But he, he or she is telling you went into it for poverty reasons. And I, I probably would understand because I know that in the hierarchy of needs, you can't be telling someone to move away from a certain strata. Okay, they are, so, they are so tourists. You, Kofi, can I even so land you, with you, this one? You, you understand that, okay. So it's not like I understand. I want you to want, see, so nothing actually happens outside of the blues. Nothing happens without understanding certain facts. Mm -hmm. We still know that some people are come. Some people come from, you know, mm -hmm. very pronounced, reliable family and background, but, mm -hmm. you know, they're still uh, delving to all the crimes. So these ones are, they're poor. They're now, poor. But my, my point here is this, that you will still have a lot of people who will delve into this. Now, because if you have, if you look at the theory of needs, there's a need strata. 
that you cannot move. It's just practically something so, 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 that has I been affected. Actually, very that you cannot very move, question, you know, from a strata of need yeah. to another no, no, when I you ask, have not satisfied ask, the no, basic thing. Simple, simple question. I so a lot you. of people will not even understand. A lot of Nigerians, and that's what we're saying that you need to look beyond I what know, you can I do ask, now. You need to look beyond being yeah, no, no, satisfied now good. So that's and look at the future. If, so a lot if, of people are hungry, and that's why they're selling their votes. Good. That's so, it. So I'm saying, I'm saying that if someone, I know it's not the same thing, but just the concept of of poverty leading to to certain actions. It's not in all cases. Uh -huh. So I'm saying that if you meet someone who is engaged, maybe theft, petty theft, and the police arrest them, or maybe armed robbery, and they say, why are you into this? They say, oh, because we don't have a, a we don't have work. It's not an excuse now. Okay. So you've answered my question. Poverty is not an excuse to sell your vote. In fact, it's the, it's the most stupid excuse you could ever give to someone. No, 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 that's let me, because let me I give you a story. Know. I have a story for you, very quickly before we go. You know, there's a, there's a WhatsApp message that's been flying around, okay? Apart from some other text messages saying, oh, if you vote for a particular person, you, you'll be given an amount of money. Now, the one I'm referring to is the one saying you'll give you 10,000 naira. There's a link. They send that. You've gotten that message, WhatsApp? I don't. Okay. Well, There's a link. Someone reason. sent it to me. I saw it yesterday. There's a link. Or is it I don't, like this morning? Because the work this morning. There was a link um, attached to the message. There's a particular candidate. They say, vote for this candidate. Is uh, You have to register. And you get, it's given out 10,000 there. So you go to the website. You fill some details. And then they're promising to give you 10,000 there for the candidate. Uh, a publication two nights, uh, two days ago or, or so, put out, uh, they, they counted how many people had, had gone on that website to register. Mercy. As of two days ago, 700,000 Nigerians had registered on that website to sell their vote for 10,000 naira. Of course, we do know that not all of them may actually be card carrying people. We don't, we don't, but the point is they're saying, hey, come on this website, put your name and your bank account and stuff. And we'll give you ten thousand naira to vote for our candidate. You know, uh, coffee, so, so coffee, as coffee of now, I can, I can, I can, I believe that if they're running to millions, more than one million people have registered. Coffee, you, you know website. what? We, we'll you, definitely, what does it say? We will have this conversation. What, what does it say? We, we will have this. Conversation. What does it say? Coffee, we need <laughs> to go now. One million oh, are registering on the website. So, so to we get need, ten thousand naira. So we need to go. And you know, that's because we. So, so what is what I'm time. saying is that we also need to tell ourselves the truth that we have got our values wrong as a people value there are certain things that if you have values you cannot do so we have to go definitely we, have to go. we, we really have to go and uh, we'll be right here to have all of this conversation we know that uh, you know we're still in the process and we hope to get it right it's a gradual one not holding brief for any behavior or any uh, sort of mishap you know to our democracy but stay with us when we return gd johnson is already uh, joining the conversation here to be part of Off the Press, please stay with us.